DNA analysis has given researchers the clearest picture yet of what a British man looked like 10,000 years ago. The story of the first Britons was thought to be settled, but a recent DNA test on a 10,000-year-old skeleton has thrown all that away. Scientists took the remains of Cheddar Man, found over a century ago, and applied the latest genetic sequencing technology to them. You see, the results that came back were so unexpected, so world-altering, that the lead scientists could hardly believe them. I feel that the skeleton is just beginning to talk to us, and we need to carry on that conversation. The first modern man to live in Britain had dark skin, a feature now common in sub-Saharan Africa, paired with eyes of the brightest blue. History was not just rewritten, it was reborn. Unlocking an ancient secret. The process had been incredibly delicate. Using a specialized dental drill, they had bored a tiny two millimeter hole into the densest bone in the human body, the petrous bone located in the inner ear. From this, they extracted just a few milligrams of bone powder, a pinch of dust that held the biological blueprint of a person from a lost world. The DNA was badly fragmented, shattered by time, but using cutting edge sequencing techniques, they pieced it back together bit by excruciating bit. The initial results trickled in, confirming what they already knew. He was a man, likely in his early 20s when he passed away. His genes showed he was lactose intolerant, a common trait for early humans who didn't drink milk past infancy. But then came the markers for physical appearance. The team ran the sequence against the genes that control pigmentation, skin, hair, and eye color. The computer churned through the data, and then it appeared on the screen. The room went quiet. What they were looking at was impossible. At least it should have been. According to every model and every assumption they had, an ancient European from 10,000 years ago should have had pale skin. But the genes told a different, shocking story. Cheddar Man possessed the genetic markers for dark to black skin pigmentation. His ancestry wasn't from the recent waves of migration that brought darker skin to Britain. It was from the very first wave of modern humans to repopulate Europe after the Ice Age. The thing nobody tells you is that these early hunter-gatherers, the ancestors of all Europeans, retained the dark skin of their own distant African origins. But the shock didn't stop there. As they analyzed the genes for eye color, another astonishing detail emerged. He carried the genes for bright blue eyes, dark skin, dark curly hair, and piercing blue eyes. This combination is practically non-existent today, a ghost from a different genetic era. The scientists were, to put it mildly, floored. They had just proven that the first modern Briton, the man from whom about 10% of the current British population is descended, looked completely different from any of the fair-skinned, ruddy-cheeked Celts or Anglo-Saxons of popular imagination. He was a Western hunter-gatherer, part of a population that roamed the continent for millennia, and his people were dark-skinned. The implications were staggering. It meant that the light skin now seen as a defining feature of native Europeans is a relatively recent development arriving only in the last six to 8,000 years with the spread of agriculture. For tens of thousands of years before that, Europe was a continent of dark skinned people. The team immediately commissioned a forensic reconstruction based on the new DNA evidence. Dutch artists Alphonse and Adri Kinnis, renowned for their lifelike models of ancient humans, took a 3D scan of Cheddar Man's skull and, guided by the genetic data, began to rebuild his face layer by layer. The result was a stunningly realistic bust of a young man with a broad face, deep-set blue eyes, and rich, dark skin. When it was unveiled to the public, it sparked a global conversation and forced a reckoning with the very foundations of European identity. The face of Cheddar Man was the face that changed history. Goff's Cold Embrace. Long before the labs and the DNA sequencers, the story of Cheddar Man began in darkness. You see, it was 1903 and workers were digging a drainage ditch for a new tourist attraction in Cheddar Gorge, a dramatic limestone canyon in Somerset, England. As they cleared away mud and rock from the mouth of Goff's cave, their shovel struck something hard. It was a human skeleton curled up and almost perfectly complete, buried under a layer of sediment. This was no ordinary find. It was immediately recognized as ancient, and subsequent dating would place it at an astonishing 10,000 years old from the Mesolithic or Middle Stone Age. 
He was given the name Cheddar Man, and for the next hundred years, he was an object of intense curiosity. He was Britain's oldest celebrity, but not all things are what they seem. While his skeleton was complete, his life was clearly not an easy one. He stood about five feet, five inches tall, which was average for his time, but his bones told a story of hardship. A healed fracture on his skull suggests he survived a significant injury and lesions on his bones pointed to a possible infection that may have ultimately contributed to his early demise. He was only in his early 20s when his life ended. Goff's cave itself was a place of deep history and frankly, a lot of danger. For thousands of years, it was used by both humans and animals. Archaeologists found not just human remains, but the bones of cave bears, hyenas, and giant wild cattle called aurochs. The cave wasn't just a home, it was a tomb. What many overlooked at the time was the context of his discovery. Was he deliberately buried? Or did he simply pass away in the cave and was covered by sediment over time? The lack of any grave goods, tools, ornaments, or offerings suggests the latter. He was alone and his end was unceremonious. For decades, scientists could only study his bones. They determined his diet was varied, consisting of red deer, aurochs, and freshwater fish based on chemical analysis of his skeleton. This painted a picture of a resourceful hunter-gatherer skillfully navigating a world that was wildly different from today. 10,000 years ago, Britain wasn't even an island. It was connected to mainland Europe by a vast marshy plain known as Doggerland. Herds of wild horses and deer roamed this lost land, and Cheddar Man's people would have followed them, living in small, mobile groups. Their world was one of dense forests, teeming rivers, and a constant struggle for survival. Many people are crazy about the idea of finding a direct link to the past, and for a while, there was even a local man, a history teacher named Adrian Target, who was found to be a direct maternal descendant of Cheddar Man through mitochondrial DNA analysis. A man living just a half mile from the cave shared a common ancestor with the skeleton from 30,000 years ago. It was a mind-bending connection across 300 generations, a living thread back to the Stone Age. But even with this link, the biggest questions remained unanswered. What did Cheddar Man truly look like? And where did his people really come from? For a century, he remained a silent, pale skeleton in a museum display case. It would take a revolution in science to finally give him back his face and his voice. A tale of two peoples. So how did scientists pull a physical description from 10,000-year-old bone dust? The answer lies in the incredible power of genomics. Get this, your DNA is like a massive instruction manual, and within it are specific chapters or genes that code for everything about you. The team at the Natural History Museum focused on a handful of these genes known to be associated with pigmentation. Two of the most important are named SLC24A5 and SLC45A2. In nearly all modern Europeans, these genes have a specific mutation that reduces the production of melanin, the pigment that darkens skin, resulting in a pale complexion. When they looked for these mutations in Cheddar Man's DNA, they weren't there. He had the ancestral versions of these genes, the same versions that are widespread in people of African descent today. This was the smoking gun for his dark skin. But here's the kicker. This doesn't mean he had recent African ancestry in the way we think of it today. All modern humans originated in Africa, but Cheddar Man's lineage had been in Europe for over 30,000 years by the time he was born. He was a full-blooded European of his time, part of a group called the Western Hunter-Gatherers, WHG. What his DNA proves is that his people, the first to resettle Europe after the Ice Age, simply retained the darker skin of their ancient ancestors. Then there are the eyes, the gene. OCA2 and its neighbor HERC2 are the primary controllers of eye color. A specific mutation in HERC2 effectively switches off the OCA2 gene, preventing the production of brown pigment in the iris. The result? blue eyes. And Cheddar Man had this exact mutation. The combination of dark skin and blue eyes is incredibly rare now because the migrations of different human groups over thousands of years have mixed up these gene combinations. But in Mesolithic Europe, it was likely quite common among the Western hunter-gatherers. He was a snapshot of a lost genetic world. His DNA told another story too, one of replacement. About 6,000 years ago, a new group of people arrived in Britain. 
They came from the Near East, from the area of modern-day Turkey, and they brought a revolutionary new technology with them, farming. These Neolithic farmers had a different genetic makeup. Crucially, they carried the mutations for pale skin. For a while, the two groups, the native dark-skinned hunter-gatherers and the incoming pale-skinned farmers, lived side by side. But the farmer's lifestyle could support much larger populations. Within just a few thousand years, the genetic signature of the Western hunter-gatherers was almost completely wiped out. Modern British people derive about 90% of their ancestry from these farmers, not from Cheddar Man's people. His lineage was a dead end, a ghost in the genome. While 10% of Brits carry some of his DNA, his paternal line, his Y haplogroup, is incredibly rare today. He was part of a dying breed, a final glimpse of the original Britons before they were overwhelmed by a new wave of humanity. This genetic replacement is a story that happened all over Europe, not just in Britain, when Britain was not an island. To truly understand Cheddar Man, you have to understand the world he lived in, and to put it mildly, it was a world on the brink of vanishing forever. 10,000 years ago, the last ice age was thawing. Massive glaciers that had covered much of northern Europe were in full retreat, and the meltwater was causing global sea levels to rise. But the process was slow. At that time, Britain was not an island. It was the northwestern peninsula of Europe connected by a huge, low-lying land bridge called Doggerland. Doggerland was no frozen wasteland. It was a vibrant landscape of rolling hills, dense forests, marshes, and winding rivers. Think of it as Europe's Serengeti. It was teeming with life. Herds of aurochs, red deer, wild boar, and horses. This was the hunting ground of Cheddar Man and his people. They were expert survivors, moving with the seasons and the animal migrations. They used sophisticated flint tools, arrowheads, scrapers, and blades to hunt butcher animals and craft everything they needed from wood, bone, and hide. They lived in small, tight-knit family groups, and their world was rich with spiritual beliefs, though they left behind no written records. But their paradise was living on borrowed time. Every year, the rising sea crept further inland. The rivers of Doggerland swelled, the coastline shrank, and the land bridge to the continent grew narrower and narrower. Sometime around 6200 BC, a catastrophic event sped up the process. A massive underwater landslide off the coast of Norway, known as the Storaga Slide, triggered a mega tsunami that washed over what was left of Doggerland, likely wiping out entire communities in a single blow. Soon after, the final land bridge was submerged and Britain was cut off from the mainland for the first time. The world of the hunter-gatherers was literally sinking beneath the waves. This environmental catastrophe was followed by the human one we discussed, the arrival of the Neolithic farmers. These newcomers didn't just bring lighter skin, they brought a completely different way of life. They cleared the forest to plant crops like wheat and barley. They raised domesticated animals like cattle and sheep. They built permanent settlements and monumental structures, the first hints of places like Stonehenge. Compared to the mobile, hunting, and gathering lifestyle, farming was a more stable and productive way to live. The thing is, we don't know for sure if the transition was peaceful or violent. Was there conflict between the native hunter-gatherers and the new arrivals? Or were Cheddar Man's people simply outcompeted and absorbed, their culture and way of life fading away as the forests they depended on were cut down? The genetic evidence suggests the latter. There was some interbreeding, but for the most part, the farmer DNA simply replaced the hunter-gatherer DNA. Within a couple of thousand years, the world of Cheddar Man was gone, drowned by the sea and replaced by a new people with new genes and a new way of life, leaving only a few ghosts behind. This discovery proves our ideas about race and ancestry are far more complex than we ever imagined. If the first Briton was a dark-skinned, blue-eyed man, what does that say about national identity today? Like and subscribe for more stories that rewrite history.